Welcome to a demonstration of the new HP Converged Infrastructure Management Solution. Today we're going to go through an end-to-end -end demonstration of the deployment of a new environment that's going to host virtual machines. We're going to configure the networks that are necessary for this virtualized environment, starting with the live migration networks, that, and we're going to go in and define the boot networks that are necessary for the stateless ESX host that we're going to use, and then we're going to go in and, and create the networks for the virtual machines that will be deployed in this environment. Now we've got the Ethernet networks defined, we're going to define the fiber channel network so that we can have access to the three-part storage array that we have backing the virtual machines. Now that we've deployed the actual networks, let's go in and define the network sets, which are a grouping of networks for convenience that will assist in the both deployment of new systems as well as maintenance. If I need to retire a network or if I need to make a change to a configuration, I can do that once through this network set concept and that will greatly speed the deployment of the, the configuration changes as well as ensure they happen accurately. Now we have the networking configured, let's go ahead and, and upload the firmware image that's going to be used in this environment. We have a, an SPP, a service pack for ProLiant bundle. We're going to upload that to the appliance here. This would be a standard image that we would download from hp.com. And now I can do firmware deployments from my environment. With that in place, we're going to go in and define our logical switch template. This gives us the ability to define my standard configuration for my HP Virtual Connect interconnect modules. So in this environment, I'm going to have two flex fabric modules in bays one and two. And now I'm going to define my uplinks. These are saying what networks are allowed to egress my interconnect modules and over which ports. So I have my networks. Now I'm selecting my ports that are going to be used. And this defines the uplink for each of these. And I can go through and continue and do this. So my first one here is the virtual machine networks. Now I'm going to do the networks that are necessary for the VM host environment. So I'll select those two networks. Those are going to be separated out on different ports for increased bandwidth and isolation. And then we'll select the, the interconnect ports here that are necessary. And finally, we're going to add in the fiber channel because these are flex fabric modules. We can also configure the fiber channel uplink ports. So we're going to configure the, the first connectivity to my A side of the SAN connection, and now we'll configure the B side. So each one of those will be defined once on each of the modules so we have redundancy in the environment. Okay, now we have the logical switch template in place, and now we can use that to bring in an enclosure under management and have it fully configured in a single step. So I'm going to bring in an enclosure here. This is a C7000 blade system enclosure from HP. Put in my credentials for the first enclosure here. And then we're also going to create a, an enclosure group or enclosure template that will be used to configure the enclosures. You'll notice I selected my the logical switch template that we had just just defined. So in this single step here, we will actually configure the full capabilities of the enclosure, including the virtual connect modules. When I want to bring in a second enclosure or a third or a hundredth enclosure, I can do that right using that same template. I don't have to go and individually configure it. It becomes a very simple single step process. At this point, we are configuring the environment. We are setting up all the blades to have the proper authentication for the to be able to come back to the appliance and report the health information. We're going to do any uh, licensing setup that's necessary will happen in this process, as well as configuring all the alerting and health monitoring capabilities so that all that is completely set up in a single step. All of this is all the background work that is necessary to manage your environment is completed in a single step. Now that we've brought in the enclosure under management, we can go in and define the server profiles. The server profiles that we're going to create will be based off a template. So we're going to create a template first, and then we'll go and actually deploy the server profiles. This template will have all the settings for my environment. This is for my VM hosts. And it will not be assigned to any hardware, so it will not take up any resources. 
we will target this template for a BL460 Generation 8 blade and we'll select our enclosure and then we'll also choose the firmware baseline that we just op uploaded a few minutes ago. We'll add our connections now. These are our network connections. We'll first create our boot network and this will select it as the primary boot device and then we will select a second connection to that same network for the secondary boot and now we will get our live migration network in place and we want to make sure that that's redundant so we'll create two copies of that and assign it to the profile and then next this is where we bring in the network sets that network set that we created a little bit ago is now being used and being assigned to the server profile and last but not least we will add the fiber channel connectivity so this is where I get connection to my SAN that will serve as a backing store for my ESX host that I'm deploying here After we get the network connections in place, now we're going to change the boot order. I can just drag and drop to put Pixie boot first. The hard, hard disk would move to second as my backup, but primarily these will be stateless, so they will boot off a of Pixie. And now I'm going to manage the BIOS settings. I'm going to go in and change these so that they are optimized for virtualization. Make sure that they are always set to have virtualization enabled with hyperthreading enabled. The performance will be optimized for performance, and the VTD will have enabled in all cases. By setting these, now you can see that I have them, only those settings that I've changed are actually displayed in the UI here, so that it's very easy to tell what I've customized. I will be using the virtual IDs for this profile, so any instances that are created from this template now will have virtual IDs. Now that we have the template in place, we're just going to copy it. We'll copy the template and give it a new name, and we'll select a, a physical hardware resource that we can use. We'll put this in day one and we'll go and create that. That task will go off in the background and continue, and now I'm going to go in and create the second profile based off this template. And we'll continue this, and ultimately we'll do four uh, hosts in the same manner. Okay, and in the background I did a couple of more of these. So now we have four of these hosts that are currently being deployed. As I click to see the server hardware, it gives me more information about the hardware, and now I'm able to go in and access the remote consoles. Now, I don't have to watch the consoles proceed, but it does let me give some insight into the progression of them, and I can see what operations are actually being performed. But keep in mind, this is a fully automated process. There is no need to watch them progress on the consoles as the server profile is being applied. So I'm going to open up all four of these consoles and get them arranged so that we can watch them all progress as the server profile is being applied. As you can see, each of the servers are now booting up in parallel and the firmware is being deployed on them, as well as the BIO settings being applied and the server personality and the connectivity that is required to get all of these systems on the network with the appropriate access to their ethernet and fiber channel connections. This, this activity will proceed throughout the duration of the, the profile deployment process. And once it completes, then the servers will be available to be booted up off the Pixie server and deployed with their configuration. At this point, the server profiles are nearing the completion of the deployment process. Once they do finish, the server profiles will be listed and ready to go for the next step in completing the deployment. 